Hi everyone, it's Roxanne Drake here with another video. Um, today I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Mandela effect and quantum change happening in our world. And this video would be for those who can see the quantum changes happening and know about the Mandela effect. If you don't know about it, this video may seem really crazy and out there to you. You need to research it first. But I'm going to move forward. Um, I've done videos in the past about how our Bibles are changing um, in real time being edited, how our bodies are changing. I did a video about how our fingers and hands are changing and other people have noticed this. So it's not just me. It's thousands of people noticing these changes. We've, we've even had um, changes reported like people who several people remember passing away before and now they're alive again. You know, in our world, we had cases where people remember Billy Graham's funeral many years ago, and now we're seeing him appear again as alive and having passed away again. And other famous people as well, we have testimonies from several people on this. So um, these occurrences can't just be dismissed as pure fantasy. What we're seeing is that space and time is changing. Um, time no longer appears to be going just sequentially. Um, it seems to be like time is like available all at once or that dimensions have opened up and things are shifting and changing. Anyway, there have been so many changes and many people say, well, how could my hand be changing? How could my body be changing? How could signs and statues be changing? Is, is there an angel going out in the middle of the night to everybody's house and coming into everybody's house and tweaking their fingers or hands or tweaking the song lyrics or something in a song. Um, it seems so strange and impossible when you think about it, but I've got a couple of scientific principles I want to talk about right now that can make it more understandable. It can enable us to grasp it better, how such a thing could happen, make it more plausible and believable and let us know that we're not crazy. Um, you know, there's spiritual principles here and there's also you know, science is increasing in, in its knowledge. You know, the Bible said in the last days, the knowledge, the knowledge would increase on the earth. So here's a couple of scientific principles I wanted to talk about that might help us understand the Mandela effect. One is, well, I'll just, I'll just mention all three at once. One is the idea that all things exist at, at, at once past, present, and future. Everything exists as once. And they call this um, space-time or Einstein's block universe principle. But um, those of us who know, you know, spiritual principles, we know that, you know, everything that ever existed is in, is in the mind of God. Or, you know, in God is everything. So that would include past, present, and future. So, you know, the spiritual to me matches what they're finding out in science. Um, the second principle I wanted to talk about, besides the space-time, four-dimensional structure where, you know, everything exists in a box all at once. I'm going to show you a little bit more about it on this video clip I have. But I also wanted to talk about holographic principle or holographic universe. And uh, so basically the holographic principle says that, let's see, our universe is like a hologram, a 3D hologram almost. And we're sort of like, you could consider us like maybe our body or an avatar in the 3D hologram. And this is not exactly how it is. I'm just trying to explain it in language that you can understand. The hologram is projected from a data set that's outside of the 3D universe. So as, as the theoretical physicist Leonard Susskind puts it, the, it's info stored on a 2D film at the edge of the cosmos. And from that information, 
there is a 3D holographic, you know, universe being projected in which we're in it. So we're all we're in this 3D hologram that's being projected from this data set in a body, but we're also outside of the 3D hologram as as the actual entity that is projecting this holographic image. Um, and there's how can I put it? images formed from data and information or thoughts and ideas that's being projected out into a world. So I'm going to play a bit of the video. I may not be doing too much of a good idea explaining that. But the thing about the holographic principle is that if you think of our universe and what we see as being created from information, almost like a, a programmer would write code and then it would be displayed or, you know, played on your computer as a 3D game that you could play in. So if the programmer wanted to change anything in the game, all they would need to do is change something in the code, you know, move around the data a little bit, change a few uh, bits of the code and they could make something different appear in the game. So if you think about our universe that way as a um, holographic thing that is being projected from a data set, you could sort of imagine that maybe somebody got hold of the place where the data or the information is stored and stuff could be moved around or changed there outside of the 3D hologram or outside of our world. And then the change would just suddenly appear in our world and it would just be so mysterious and magical to us. Now, I'm not saying that's the way it is and I don't know how they would get a hold of it. You know, some people talk about how everything that happens in our world is recorded in a book. You know, the Bible says our, our life events are recorded in the book. You've got DNA, which is sort of like a code there. I've read, I'm not sure if this is true, that in the fifth dimension, there are Akashic, Akashic records or something for the world. But um, however you put it, it seems like it's easier to grasp in your mind how such a weird thing like our hands changing could occur if you think of everything in our world is just some data and that data could get changed and then we could just see new images in our world. Um, even the idea of time, you know, everything is an idea first or a thought, time even, okay, is an idea and a thought. So the third um, principle is that for us to share in this world experience, we all have to have access to this one mind or this mind that has all the information for our world in it. So we all have this one mind for this world that's part of our mind and part of our consciousness. So those three principles, holographic universe, um, time is not like we think it is, all things exist as once, time is just an idea, and the fact that we're all, we all have this one mind part of us that is that projects this um, holographic universe that we experience. So what I'm gonna do really quickly at the before I end this is just maybe play a minute Some or two from this video time on time, then I'm gonna play a, a minute from the holographic where time universe. And are so here we go. Known as space time, which is Bakken's theory of relativity, state part of a four dimension structure where everything has happened time has its ordinates in space time. Otherwise known this would space allow every real in the sense the theory, the past, which is until they're in space time, theory of making everything equally important present. Part of a four Massachusetts Institute of Technophysicist Max Tegmark told we can portray our reality this as either a three dimensional play stuff happens over time, past, or as a four dimensional play nothing happens. Time. And if it really is, then change really is an present. illusion, cause there's nothing changing. It's all there, past, present, and future. We have the illusion that any already happened in the future doesn't yet exist. Three dimensional and that place where stuff happens over time, or as a four dimensional place where nothing happens. And if it really is the second picture, then change really is an illusion, because there's nothing that's changing. It's all just there, past, present, and time. future. We have However, the a number of physicists are coming moment, around to the idea that these four dimensions emerge from a two formation. Okay, so this you can go check out this video yourself. I'll put a link to that it. That which can wish one thing from another. Okay, distinguishes let me show the you the one about the holographic universe. Just a little bit the here. I'll show you a couple of minutes. Okay, here John we go.
who was a sort of Princeton human being that at the time. However, a growing number of physicists are coming around to the idea that these four dimensions emerge from a two-dimensional level formation. What is information? Information is that which can distinguish one thing from another. What distinguishes that information is consciousness. 